In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, I am going to share my thoughts on UConn's national championship performance. UConn won their second title in a row with a 75-60 win over Zach Eady and the Purdue Boilermakers. So I'm going to give my thoughts and my opinions on how the top NBA prospects fared in tonight's national title game. Stay tuned. Big, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I am your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board, and I am solo, dolo tonight. It is late or early, depending on how you look at it, but I'm solo, dolo, and I'm just going to share my thoughts on how the top prospects fare. Just give my overall thoughts and opinions on this game, but before I get started, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn because LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your first job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Again, that is locked on NBA. I left out the NBA, but remember, Locked On NBA, LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NBA. If you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Make sure you click the bell so you can be notified because it is officially NBA draft season. And depending on where you're at when you hear this, because I'm posting right after the game, But we are about 34 or 33 days away from the lottery. That's how close we are to the lottery. So I'm looking forward to the lottery results. I plan to be in Chicago, but that's still a ways away. But let's talk about tonight's game where UConn won their second championship in a row. The first team to repeat since the Florida Gators. And they won in convincing fashion. It's kind of like how they always do. UConn just wears you down and they just wear you down and they just have too much talent. And so they were the best team from start to finish this season. And they ended the season on a, on a strong note against Zach Eady and Purdue. So I just want to share my thoughts. And before I talk about Eady, I know that is pretty much the, the topic of discussion. It's kind of like the, the men's version of what went on in the Final Four. You had South Carolina going up against Caitlin Clark in Iowa. And in this game, you had UConn going up against Zach Eady and Purdue. And I'll, I'll talk about Zach Eady's teammates and the lack of help that he had. But UConn won commandingly, despite Zach Eady having a very good game on paper. He had 37 points. But it was a very interesting 37 points. But the player that I want to start off talking about is Tristan Newton. He showcased his all-around game. He had 20 points, 7 assists, 0 turnovers. And you know what? At some point, you just have to look at Tristan Newton. You can't deny their production, whether, whether it was at East Carolina. You can even go back to his high school days. He was super productive. I think he led the state of Texas in scoring average 37 points per game out of El Paso. Goes to East Carolina, puts up good numbers, transfers to UConn. The step up in competition doesn't really phase him at all. I mean, he's had a really, really good career. Very underrated prospect. Fills up the stat sheet. And I just thought this NCAA tournament and most notably the championship game showcase exactly who he is. Now, he's not the most efficient guy from the floor. You look at the the percentages, they're not going to wow you, but he stuffs. The stat sheet is a triple-double threat. You can pretty much pencil him in for six rebounds or six assists every night. His versatility was on full display against Purdue. He made plays out of ball screens. He knocked on open shots. He showcased his basketball IQ. He finished over Zach Eady. I mean, he just had a very, very impressive performance. Like I said, he doesn't wow you with, like, athleticism and 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 sharp shooting he just does all the little things that that helps your team win so I, I was very impressed with him and when you look at his size and his feel for the game and his experience I think there's a couple of teams that 
probably would value what he brings to the table more than others. And the two teams that come to mind, just first off come to mind, are the Denver Nuggets and the Miami Heat. And Newton is a guy that I think with his performance in the tournament, just overall this season, but I think the the performance in the national championship game solidified his spot in the 2024 NBA draft. I know he's an older prospect. And, you know, the, the, the flavor of the month is the younger guys, the guys that have the higher upside or the flashy athletes. But I think Newton is a guy that will outplay players in this draft class that will be drafted ahead of him because teams are going to gamble on upside. And I totally get it. Totally, totally get why you would gamble on upside. But I was very, very impressed with Tristan Newton's performance. And then I want to talk about Cam Spencer. Cam Spencer had a good game, 11 points, 8 rebounds. He let UConn in boards. Is a fiery competitor. He's the guy that you want on your team. Does the little things and can shoot the ball. Good size. I think I think um, Cam Spencer, another transfer from UConn. And before I talk a little bit more, I just love the way Danny Hurley has built this roster. You have your, your five-star guys. You have... Your two players that are probably going to be top five picks, but then you just have these complimentary veteran pieces around them. And I think that is the way that you're going to have to build a championship team in college basketball going forward. I don't see a situation where having a star studded freshman class is going to allow you to have deep NCAA tournament runs. I mean, Duke was an exception a couple of years ago with Ben Carroll. But college basketball is getting older, and you need these veteran players to surround your NBA prospects. And so I just love the way Danny Hurley has built this UConn program. And he told us in 2020 that UConn was coming, and he was definitely, definitely right about that. But in the second segment, I have to talk about their two NBA prospects, Donovan Klingen and Stefan Castle. I thought they... I thought they put on a pretty good performance that puts them in my top five on my big board. It should be coming out this week, but I think Klingon and Stefan Castle are going to be mainstays between now and the draft in my top five. All right, so when we return, I'm going to talk about Donovan Klingon's defense and Stefan Castle's just intangibles and why I think that he has a chance to move into the top three. But before I get into that, I want to talk to you about LinkedIn, because when you are a small business, you're looking to hire and find quality professionals for the right roles. Just like basketball, you got to have the right role and the right fit, which is why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs, because LinkedIn, LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster, but more importantly, for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board. LinkedIn has a huge network of over a billion professionals. That's crazy. A billion professionals, which makes it the best place to find candidates. You get access to professionals that you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does all of that while making the process very simple and intuitive and hiring. I mean, it's simple when you have that many candidates and when you have that many candidates to choose from. It's a very simple process, and that's why 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours when they use LinkedIn. And that's because LinkedIn knows that when you are a small business owner, you are wearing so many hats, you may not have the time or resources to hire. And LinkedIn is constantly, constantly finding ways to make the process easy for small businesses. They even launched a feature that will help you write job descriptions, which makes the process easier and quicker. That's why 2.5 million businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA. That is LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I got a question for you. It's, it's actually a pretty serious question. Are you spending your days watching Fox Sports and ESPN? And do you have to turn the volume down because all they're doing is yelling and screaming at each other? Well, I have a solution for you. It is Locked On Sports Today, which is a free 24 hours a day, seven days a week streaming channel that is programmed to bring you the biggest stories without all of the yelling and screaming. 
Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, and it is streaming 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube or for free on Amazon Fire TV, which is the Amazon Fire TV channels app, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, second segment, we have to talk about Donovan Klingon. On paper, he didn't have like the most dominant game. He finished with 11 points and five rebounds, was only credited for one block. But I thought that, one, he showed why he is such a feared defender, but it was in a different way. Zach Eady had his way with Klingon early in the game. I think he probably had like his first 14 or 16 points in like the first 12 minutes of the game. And it looked like Edie was going to win that matchup, but Klingon adjusted. And when the game, I want to say when the game mattered most, which was in the middle of the game, because Purdue was hanging with UConn. But then when the game mattered most, Donovan Klingon put a lid on the basket. He shut down Zach Edie. And he wouldn't allow Edie to get to a sweet spot, which is off his left shoulder, where he has that jump hook that just seems like he doesn't miss. So I thought Klingon did an excellent, excellent job of making things uncomfortable for Edie. Now, when you look at the stat sheets, if you didn't watch the game and you just look at the box score, it looks like Edie dominated and he did not get any help. Part of that is true, but there was a stretch where I think he missed like six field goals in a row, and Donovan Klingon made life miserable for him during that stretch. And to me, that was the stretch that basically changed the game, opened things up for UConn. We've seen Klingon dominate games as a weak side shot blocker, as a guy that kind of shuts down pick and rolls. But this time he had to play man-to-man defense, one-on-one, against arguably, which I don't even know if it's arguably, the most dominant offensive force in college basketball. And again, on paper, it doesn't look like it was close to an even matchup, but I thought Klingon did a good job of showing that he can defend, you know, a seven foot four, 300 plus pound guy and and make life, or I wouldn't say make life miserable, but he did take away Edie's sweet spots. and, And I thought that he did a good job of challenging, challenging him, made a couple good passes. I think Klingon has put himself in position to be a top five pick. Some say top three. Some may even think he can go number one. I think that's all going to depend on what he shows in the pre-draft process as far as on the offensive end of the court because we know he can defend. Speaking of defense, Stephon Castle. I mean, the word dog is kind of overused, but Stephon Castle is a pit bull, excellent defender. I think just defensively alone, He can carve out a role in the NBA, but he's such an intriguing prospect because he does all of the little things, whether it's defend, rebound, he's tough, he's physical, he makes plays off the ball, didn't particularly shoot the ball well, but he's a player that I think if he had a consistent jumper, and if he even shows better shooting, I I wouldn't say mechanics, but if he just shows promise as a shooter in the pre-draft process, I think he could be a candidate to go number one because there's so many ways that he impacts the game he can make the right reads he can play off the ball cut he can post up he just brings so much to the table and if I'm an NBA team and and especially in this draft I may say you know what I like the intangibles I like what he brings to the table how he impacts games if my developmental staff can get him a consistent jump shot We got something there. So Castle definitely impressed me. He's been all over the board for me this season. And then you have to remember that he missed some time early in the year with the knee injury, decided to come back. It may not seem like much, but for a guy that was a projected first-round pick, even lottery pick, to finish out the season, because there are some players that that I think would shut it down and say, I can't risk injury. I can't risk making the injury worse. And that's just the era that we live in. Some guys are looking more so to protect their draft stock, which on one hand makes sense than it, than to help the team. Castle came back, started playing his best basketball towards the end of the season. And he is a jump shot away, in my opinion, from being the best prospect in this draft. But there are so many other guys in this draft that have questionable jump shots. So if you're going to gamble on upside, I think Stefan Castle is a guy that you can that you can possibly hear about being mentioned as a top three pick. Mark my word. But overall, I just thought his well-rounded game and his defensive tenacity 
was on full display. He shows that he can be a valuable asset on a team where he's playing a complementary role. And if he can, again, knock down open shots, and if he ends up being like a full-time point guard, he can be pretty special. All right, in the last segment, I have to talk about Zach Eady, his numbers, and why his 37-point, 10-rebound game left. It, there's still some question marks. Any other player, I, I would say, you put up 37 points in a national championship game, it is going. that's super impressive. And I think with Edie, he got off to a good start. The middle was, ah, and then he finished strong at the end, but the game was decided. But I'll talk a little bit more about Zach Edie. But I have to talk to you about Game Time, which is my favorite app when it comes to buying tickets. And Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. And prices on the Game Time app, they actually go down the closer you get to the first pitch. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and they have a low price guarantee. And Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League tickets. I use Game Time to buy tickets to a New York Yankees game when I was in New York for the 2023 NBA draft. If the Yankees or Mets are in town when I'm back in New York for the draft, I'm definitely going to use the Game Time app to buy more tickets. One of my favorite features of the Game Time app is that they have last minute tickets, they have flash deals, and they have zone deals. And the zone deals are different deals in different zones of the stadium or the arena. And they are easy to find and easy to get Major League Baseball tickets for any kind of event. Like I said earlier, you get the views from the seat. So you know, and it's not like a, a template of a stadium, it's the actual stadium and you get views from your seats and they have the low price guarantee they have event cancellation protection and they even have job loss protection so they have last minute deals you can save up to 60 percent off buying last minute sports concerts comedy theater and more and with their flash deals you can save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event the zone deals you save even more time when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats for you and then what i love the most is that they have the all-in prices it's not like one of those apps where you look for tickets let's say the ticket costs 150 dollars and right when you're about to submit payment you see it jumped up to 278 dollars with game time they have the all-in prices and you can see the price up front so there's no surprise at checkout so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use the code locked on nba for twenty dollars off your first purchase again download the game time app use the promo code locked on nba you can get twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and use the redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-n-b-a for twenty dollars off last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed All right, last segment. I want to wrap up this episode talking about Zach Eady. Zach Eady got off to a crazy start. Like the way he got off to the start, I thought like, hey, he is embarrassing Donovan Klingon. Klingon actually looked pretty small. That was the first time I've seen Klingon look small next to another basketball player but Edie was able to get to his left shoulder he was making jump hooks he showed the touch he just showed his physical dominance early in the game and then after that Donovan Klingon put a lid on the rim now Edie finished with 37 points on 15 or 25 shooting along with 10 rebounds but his early dominance it it was followed by struggles and critical moments of a game and it was kind of like a heavyweight boxing match and I had tweeted about this you ever watch like a heavyweight fight where someone gets out to an early start and they're just knocking and, and I mean they're just landing powerful punches, body blows, and you're starting to think like this fight may not make it to the end. And then all of a sudden they cannot land a punch. The the opposing boxer kind of figured things out and the fight basically was over at that point. And that was kind of like the game. Even though Klingon had the numbers, I feel like got off to a hot start. UConn made some adjustments, then Klingon was able to defend him one-on-one, take away his sweet spots, and when the game mattered, when the game was still within reach, 
Edie really struggled. Again, he got his points late, but I feel like most of those points late came when the game was decided, when UConn was up by 10 or more. In his defense, he got absolutely zero help from his team. I mean, zero, zero help. Purdue is known for shooting threes, and it's kind of like their game plan is, you know, pick your poison. Either Edie's going to dominate you around the block, and if you decide to double team, they're going to loosen up your coverages by knocking down threes. Well, they couldn't even get threes off this game. They were one for seven from three. They were only able to attempt seven threes the entire game, and they were nine for 29 overall. So Edie put up his points, but overall as a team, I mean, you take away Zach Edie's 15 of 25, Nine for 29. And you can't have those type of performances if you are trying to be UConn. But I can't even say it was like a cold shooting performance for Purdue. They just couldn't get quality shots off. I thought the game plan was great. The, the talent mismatch was, was, it was wide. I mean, it was a wide gap between the talented players on UConn's team and Purdue's roster. I actually had to ask myself, is there anybody on Purdue other than Zach Eady that could make UConn's rotation and when you have to when, when there's a question like that and you're asking that at least you know whether it's fair or not but just the fact that I don't know shows you like how wide the talent gap was between the two teams but this is one of those games to where I feel like and I'll close with this if you are a Zach Eady supporter you can look at the numbers and say even if he didn't have his best game he still finished with 37 points against the best team in college basketball and against arguably, and most people would agree, the best defender, especially interior defender in college basketball. Now, if you are a person that has concerns about Zach Eady or you wonder how he fits into the modern NBA, this game showed you some some reasons why you should be concerned. I thought defensively he showed that he can be attacked, even though he had a couple emphatic blocks early in the game. There was a few plays where you kind of attacked him. You can just see the instincts as a shot blocker aren't there as opposed to a Klingon, even though Klingon only had one block. But you saw how you kind of was able to attack him, whether it's in pick and roll. Number one, it looked like he ran out of gas and got tired early in the second half. Actually, probably halfway through the first half and the start of the second half. And then on defense, you saw that even though he's 7'4 and he had some emphatic blocks early in the game, that he can be attacked on defense. UConn was able to get some backdoor lobs. Tristan Newton was able to finish around him at the rim. And you can see that he just doesn't have the same shot-blocking instincts as Donovan Klingon. Even though Klingon only had one block, you, you can see that there are some concerns about him on the defensive end. So it's just one of those games where you just kind of saw his... You saw the areas where he's vulnerable, but you also saw how dominant he can be in stretches. And so I still think that he's worthy of a first-round pick in this draft. I've, I've seen some people say he's a lottery pick. Some people think that he can go top 10. I've talked to some scouts. I say they would take him in a second round. I mean, his draft range is, is very wide. It's divisive. But I still think a team is going to take him in the, in the first round and, and use him as a wild card. Use him as a guy that you can throw in for 12 to 20 minutes per game. And he can kind of muck things up and get guys in foul trouble. Because if he gets to that left shoulder, it is automatic. It is a bucket, especially if teams are, are trying to go small. And so, like I said, this is a game where if you really, really like Zach Eady, then you probably blame his teammates because they really didn't help him out. But if it's a game, if, if you aren't a big Zach Eady fan, then you can point and say that his 37 points were, you know, most of them came when the game was already decided. But either way, I think Zach Eady's a first round pick. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. I'm just giving a recap from the 2024 NCAA championship game. Once again, it's Rafael Barlow, and I am out.